Professor Akram here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use deformations with the loft tool in 3ds Max. So I have been working on a scene here where I have a tasty slice of bacon that I created by using the spline tools to create an outline and then extrude the shape into a 3D object. I also have a plate and a mug that I created using the spline tools to create a side section view of the object. And then using the lathe tool, I extruded it around a 360 point, creating these objects. I've also used the loft tool for the handle of the mug here, where I've taken a spline shape and extruded it along a path. So now we're going to extend some of the capabilities of a loft. Now a loft, as I said, is an extrusion along a path, and that path doesn't have to be complex as the mug handle here, it could be a straight line. So why would you want to loft something along a straight line when you can simply do an extrude as we did with the bacon? Well, loft has several different capabilities, one of which is deform the loft. So once it creates the extrusion, we can deform how that extrusion behaves. The first thing I want to do, as you can see in my top view here, I've actually already created a spline outline of a fried egg. Now, I want to loft this, and it may be somewhat difficult to see what's going on with our plate in view. So I can turn off any of the geometry that I have in my scene and hide it while I'm working as needed. One of the ways to do that is if I go over to my tab controls over here, I can go to the display tab, and you can notice that I can hide items by their name. And this is one of many different ways to hide items. And you'll see that I don't actually have too many objects in my scene, but if I had a lot of objects and I knew that I wanted to hide the plate, I could simply start typing the word plate and immediately it finds that object and I can hit the little eyeball and turn that off. Now this only really works if you actually name your objects as you're creating them and you name your objects in the modify tab. So this is very helpful if you've got a lot of objects in your scene and you need to reference certain ones at a given time. So I'm going to close out that window. And here you can see in the top view a little bit better my little egg outline. In the left view, I have also drawn this line, which is kind of off the side of the egg. And this is the path or the thickness of my loft for the egg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select either the path or the shape. In this case, I'm going to select the shape because my shape is in the right location. I'm going to go to the Create tab, and I'm going to go to Geometry, and I'm going to make sure that I have Compound Objects selected. And I'm going to do a loft. This time around, I'm going to get the path, and I'm going to move the path to where the shape is. And I'm going to select that line path. And there you can see it created a 3D model of my egg. And you can see that it extruded this object uniformly. So the entire shape added height uniformly going up along that path. But eggs are organic. They're not all the same height. Certain parts of a fried egg are higher than others. So one of the things that we can actually do is we can add a deform to this loft which will actually give some shaping to our object. So to do this, with our little fried egg object selected, I'm going to go to the Modify tab, and under the Modify tab, you'll notice that it is now a compound object is a loft, and down in the panel here, I now have an option called Deformations, and if I click on that, I can deform this object based on a couple of different settings. In my case, I want to change the scale of of how much depth or height this egg has applied to it. So I'm going to go to scale. In the deformation window, you can see there's a bunch of different tools here. And you can see up here at the top, I can make this symmetrical. 
which we're going to actually keep turned on. And then I can change if I want to change this along the Y axis or the X axis. You'll notice that it says X axis, which is the red line. If I click the green line, you can see it's on Y axis. But I am going to deform this shape along the X axis. And I'm simply going to take my Minimax here and I'm going to drop one of them, these points, down to the bottom. And if you watch inside of our perspective window here, you can already kind Kind of see what's going on. It has made the outer edges of our egg very shallow in height, sort of at the minimum height, while the center of the egg has the maximum height. But we can control and refine this a little bit more, making it more organic by adding more points. So this item here is to insert a point, and I'm just simply going to come a little way from my end here and I'm going to click um, along this path. And then I can manipulate where I want that point to be. And I can also manipulate if that is a linear point or a curved point. I actually want this to be a curved point, so I'm going to right click on that point and do a Bezier curve. And again, this is going to give me those handlebars similar to when we create our vertices and splines. So to manipulate this point, I need to go over to the Move tool, and I'm going to be able to manipulate that shape. And what I want to get is a simple curve here. I'm going to want to uh, bring this back down on the edge, so I'm going to create a couple more points. I'm going to click here. I'm going to create a point right about here and a point right about there. And I'm going to go into my move tool and I'm going to start moving these points. And again, I want most of these points to have the busier curve so that we get a nice smooth egg here. And you can see, especially here in the left view, you get a much better perspective of what's going on here is that we're getting some nice curves to our egg. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close my deformation here. So this is one way that you can manipulate a loft using the scale deformation. Now that I have my egg, it still doesn't quite look like an egg because we're missing the yolk. So we're going to add a yolk to this. Well, we can just use simple geometry for this because typically it's going to be a basic sphere type shape. So if I go to my create tab and I go to ge geometry and I go back to standard primitives, I have a couple of different standard primitives that I can use. But in my case, I'm going to use a geosphere instead of a sphere. And the reason behind this is if I click on geosphere, one of the options I have is a hemisphere, meaning it's only going to create half of the sphere. And remember, especially in games, we want to keep our geometry data as lightweight as possible. So if I don't need a whole sphere, why am I creating a whole sphere? I'm going to use the hemisphere here, and I don't want that many segments. I'm going to turn my segments down to, let's say, six. And in the top view, in the center of my little egg here, I'm going to draw out my yolk. And I can use my move tool as needed to uh, move this object up or down within the yolk here. And I can also, you'll notice again, this is a rather plumpy yolk. I mean, it sticks out way far from the top of the egg. But I can scale this down. And what I want to do, if I go to my scale tool, I actually want to do a non-uniform scale. And I want to do that non-uniform scale in the Y plane. And so this actually brings it back into the egg white so that it looks like it's almost protruding a little bit out of it here. There we go. And of course, I can change the colors of these objects. I'm going to select my egg white here, go to Modify tab. I'm going to change this color to a white. Press OK. I'm going to select my egg yolk. And I'm going to select a nice yellowy color for that. 
So now I have my little fried egg for my theme. I'm going to go ahead and turn my bacon and my plate back on so that we can get a sense of what our scene now looks like. So that is an example of how you can use these formations with your loft commands to create more complex geometry. I hope you found this lesson informative. And don't forget to check out other lessons and tutorials on the channel. So what are you waiting for? Get creative today!